The one thing I learned at a young age that many people don't like to hear is the fact that no one is coming to save you. If you're a firstborn like me, you learned this the hard way because no matter how many times you prayed to the Lord to save you from your stolen childhood, no one came. It's like your prayers were ricocheting on the wall as if you weren't loud enough. Prayers were like an echo that laughed back at you, as if to tell you that God was too busy for you. The silence, the constant despair, it was the perfect reminder to, as the Koreans like to say, Chong Shin Chario, pull yourself together. <laughs> The reality is that it is upon you to find the path that will lead you to your dreams. You are the driver of your life. Even if you don't want to do something because it isn't interesting, because you're just not feeling it, if you really want to move the needle, you have to do it regardless. It is the painful truth and one of the reasons why many people don't achieve success in their lives, whatever you define success as, it's because they don't want to do the painful and dirty work that is needed in order to make dreams a reality. Reality. It's why a lot of motivational speakers get paid millions to travel all over the world because people like to be told they can be great but very few are willing to put in the real work to become great. Instead of getting down to the root of their traumas, many prefer to read self-development books and listen to podcasts. No amount of knowledge can prepare you for the journey that will take you to the heights you desire. If it were that predictable and easy to find in books, everyone would have done it. It is important to read other people's stories and experiences to get an idea of what you'll be dealing with. But your journey will be different because you're not the podcast host, you're not the writer of that book, and sometimes their circumstances are way too different from what you have. You also have to learn about the world. I have met so many people who like living in a fantasy, thinking that societal issues don't affect them just because they don't believe in these issues. In Kiswahili we say, asiefunzo na mamae, hufunzo na ulimwengu. If your mother doesn't teach you, the world will. If you don't learn how the world works, you'll have a hard time. And I can tell you this because I have learned the hard way myself. It's a reality that even if you are good at your job, if you don't know how to play office politics, you won't stick around for long. I have met women who say that patriarchy doesn't exist, but whether you believe it or not, Mabel, patriarchal societies will prevent you from entering rooms you're qualified to be in just because you're a woman. Learn about the systems that run your society so that you can know how to navigate them, so that you're well prepared, so that you're not surprised because no matter how kind and nice you may be, the world will not return the favor. You have to learn to advocate for yourself, to fight unfairness without waiting for a messiah because you will have bled dry by the time they arrive to save you if they do at all. Another important thing to learn is to rewire failure. You have to be comfortable with doing things even when you don't see expected results instantaneously. I'd say this is my superpower because anytime I have an idea, I don't wait for anyone. I just do it. There is so much power in being the person that bets on themselves, on being someone that executes. And of course, this means you have to share the fear of failure, the fear of embarrassment, the fear of being misunderstood. If you have to become the chief of delusion, then become one as long as you know that that is the mindset that will help you to jump over the fence that has been keeping you away from your dream life. And of course, it's not going to be easy, but you have to do it anyway. Another great lesson that I've learned over time is the power of loving yourself, because if you don't, you will continue consistently make choices that are against you. It is true that you become your thoughts. If you think you are incapable, you will always sabotage yourself with procrastination and other excuses. You have to love yourself so much to know that you are the prize in your own life. You are the moment. You are the protagonist. And everything you do should be to the betterment of you. Because in becoming a better person that you envision, you are actually contributing to making the world a better place. Because honestly, we need more people that love themselves so that we can win against all these nonsensical problems that stem from hate, both self-hate and the immense hate for other people. I've been getting a lot of comments lately from people who don't understand that religion can be different from God. And I'll even go a step further and say I'm the kind of person that doesn't believe that God interferes with our day-to-day -day lives. Because if that were true, then it would mean that God is just watching while bad things are happening and he's not doing anything yet he has the power to ensure that these things are not happening. I choose to believe that God, the higher power, does 
does not interfere with our day to day because I do believe that the higher power has already given us everything that we need. I always find it so fascinating when people just want to pray and expect that things are just going to magically happen. People are always waiting for miracles and this is exactly why people are always asking why is it that the most evil people are always the most successful because you know what these people are using whatever means to get whatever they want whether they use the correct means or the wrong means. But the problem with a lot of good people they think that they just need to pray to God to go to church and everything is going to be fine. When they see corrupt leaders they're thinking I'll go to church and I'm gonna pray to God to help us get rid of this corrupt leaders it doesn't work like that <laughs> God has already provided you with a brain to use to think to critically think to listen to what these leaders are telling you to ask yourself is what I'm hearing right a brain that should lead you to cast a vote for the right leader for you but no a lot of people just want to sit down and pray wait for a savior to come and save them it doesn't work like that in fact I think that this idea idea of just sitting down somewhere and praying and waiting for miracles to happen it's the biggest disrespect to God himself because he has given you everything you need but you're still there waiting for a miracle to happen you have been provided with all the ingredients you need to bake a cake but you're sitting down waiting for a cake to fall down from heaven for you that is hugely disrespectful to the higher power it's like if I just sat down and prayed to have a YouTube channel, a successful YouTube channel, but didn't make videos. Ha <laughs> Even if I pray, I still have to script this video, I have to film it, I have to edit it, and I have to publish. Praying is not enough. <laughs> And I remember while I was in uni, there was a group of people that used to wake up at 3 a.m. to go pray in the mountains, in the hills, in the rocks. And my university was actually in a wild animal and snake infested area. And people are waking up at night to go to a hill with the rocks that potentially has snakes and a leopard or a lion could appear. These people are waking up at this time, putting themselves in danger just to go to pray <laughs> which of course there's nothing wrong with this but these same people would always have trouble while they were in class because they were dozing off of course because you didn't get enough sleep because you woke up at 3 a.m to go pray every time they had free time they were always praying and then when it came to exam time they'd be like oh my god exams are so tough i don't even know anything in this subject and you're like you used your entire time to pray and now you are surprised that you do not know anything about the subjects that you were being taught and obviously you're going to fail because you're not prepared for the exam even god is just not going to help you god has given you a brain to use but instead of using that brain you're going out there hoping that god is going to do the exams for you because you've been praying you need to do the work you have to put in the effort because no one is going to do it for you and i know there's some people who are like oh prayer works prayer works no one is discounting the fact that prayer works but prayer alone doesn't work i also find it so interesting how a lot of people use prayers to get keep and this is something that i see in a lot of africans when someone succeeds at something or they achieve something that is considered big they are like oh god did it for me it was all god and i always find this so interesting because there's a way of keeping other people from getting the same success that you've gotten because the moment you say that oh god did it for me it's a way of shutting down any questions that other people have because most times when people hear oh god did it for me they won't ask you how you got this and this and this they will just be like okay i'm gonna go to church and pray harder so that god can do it for me too <laughs> I think this is one of the reasons why a lot of African countries are just not going to progress in the way that they should and what we are going to see and what we are actually seeing is 
a lot of other people from other countries are seeing the opportunity in African countries and they're coming and they're taking over everything. It's colonization, hat, whatever it is. Because a lot of Africans who are already successful do not want to share the secrets of that success. And I've actually spoken about this in previous videos about the psychology of Africans and how something like scarcity mindset is one of the things that really would make people behave like this. Because these people will think that, oh, if other people become successful, they're going to take away from my own success. That's why saying God did it for me is one of the ways of just ensuring that you remain in your success on your own. And this reminds me of some comments that I've been getting in a previous video where I said, I'm the alpha and omega. And there's some people who are like, the moment you say that, I stopped watching. <laughs> <laughs> and this is so funny because oh my god social media shows me each and every day how illiterate people are i mean if you could just use your brain a little your god-given brain and listen to why i said that statement in the context of that video clearly it was a figure of speech it was symbolism but if you didn't pay attention in english class <sighs> But this also brings something else up and it's this idea that people have that the higher power or God is outside of us and this is very convenient for the people that have created religion because getting to convince people and brainwash people that you have to be looking for God elsewhere is the perfect way to manipulate people to control people. And this is one of the reasons why religion has so much influence in our societies in our day-to-day -day lives in our families in our governmental systems in our education it's not by mistake it's by design by human design and the fact that a lot of people would be very uncomfortable with hearing someone say i'm the alpha and omega of course without understanding this could be symbolism but even if i meant it that way there's nothing wrong with that because it is a fact that all of us all of us are a manifestation of God, a manifestation of the higher power. And that means that this higher power is in us. And each and every time you're going out there to look for it, you're doing a disservice to yourself. You're actually disrespecting this higher power because they're already in you, but you can't recognize that. But I do understand that a lot of people do not want to accept that we are all manifestations of God. We are all manifestations of the higher power and we have this power inside of us because that would mean there is no reason why you should be judging somebody else for how they choose to live their life because they are a manifestation of the higher power just like you you have no right to be judging them a lot of people want to continue to oppress other people to justify the oppressions of other people most times you're actually doing a disservice to yourself if you think like this because you will not realize that the higher power in you has already given you all the blueprints that you need to live a great life and we call this intuition if you listen to your intuition then you will always know exactly what you need to be doing at different seasons of your life a lot of people have been so brainwashed by religion that they've suppressed the voice inside of them this leads them to constantly listen to other people if they want to do something in their lives instead of just trusting themselves they are going out there asking their pastor or I don't know women in church they're asking them for advice no one can advise you about your life because no one is you You've been brought here perhaps to live a life that nobody else in your family has lived but because you constantly are listening to the voices of other people you end up living a life that is just the same as everyone else's and you find yourself having a lot of spiritual turmoil because you refuse to listen to the voice in you in the first place and God cannot save you from that because God has already given you all the tools you need including that intuition to guide you but you refuse to listen to it after all this someone is gonna be no but you know it's good to listen to other people oh.